It's Tuesday Wrestling, and we all know what that means. That means we get to review once again NWA Power, AEW Dark, and of course, NXT 2.0, which is before we get to spring breaking, which I'm excited for. But we also got some news updates that we really, really need to share with everybody. So, let's get ready for another episode of the Weeder Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead at WrestleZone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay right here. So, let's begin with NWA Power. Now, it opened up with an interview by Kyle Davis, and once again, the most hated group <coughs> graced themselves with their presence, except for one. I'm talking about the Cardonas, Chelsea Green, VSK, and Mike Knox. As you know, they've been declaring themselves as the best fa uh, family ever. Not to mention, the thing is, they don't. They claim Chelsea claims that she is the best woman wrestler. Well, she doesn't have the title. Neither does the VSK or Mike Knox has the tag titles. But however, they believe that people need to shut up and grace them. Because they are that Matt Cardona is the true savior of NWA. Now our opening match is Jordan Clearwater along with that sleaze ball of Black G's t uh, taking on Nick Aldis. Now you know Nick Aldis his where his mind is at. He wants another crack of Matt Cardona, but however he has to get through <coughs> Jordan Clearwater. But as always, Black G's tries to interfere, but his dummy. Decided to get involved and knocked out by, of course, Nick Aldis. Allowing for Nick Aldis to apply the Texas Cloverleaf onto Clearwater and force them to tap out. Now, our next match, we have, of course, the Junior Heavyweight Championship on the line between Red Titus and Homicide. I mean, the match was okay. It was really interesting to watch, not to mention that Homicide is trying to prove he is a fighting champion. And that's exactly what he's been doing ever since he became the NWA Junior Heavyweight Champion. So, he pulled off the Gringo Killer and it was over right from there. Now, we had a surprise interview. This person made her appearance on NWA USA. I'm talking about a former Beautiful People and Janelle Love. Velvet Sky had no clue what was going on. But is now been told. It's official. And Janelle Love is now officially with the NWA. <coughs> now. Our next interview. Mae Valentine decided to interview Mickey James. Now Mickey James has a lot of things in her mind. One is the Cardonas. Was Card Cardonas. As you know they've been causing the problems. Not to mention, she mentioned about how, okay, let the husband, their husbands, both Chelsea and Mickey, let their husband fight it off. This is two grown men, but Chelsea didn't see it that way. Then, of course, the thing with Jeff Jarrett and, of course, the Crockett Cup. But the one thing she does have to notice is the NWA Women's World title. She wants another, wants a shot of this title, but, however, Billy Corgan has not been answering her phone calls about this. But he did put her in a match against... The one person that the N the women's division in NWA do not like, I'm talking about Natalia Morkova. So basically, we're going to see that soon. Now, our next match, we got Aaron Stevens taking on his former friend, Trevor Murdoch. Now, Trevor Murdoch has been in a different path ever since he lost the NWA world title to Matt Cardona. Basically, he felt that people have turned their backs on him and all this and that, but he's trying desperately to get back on top. Now, he does have a, t in a 
and title for a rematch. It's still unclear when that could happen, but we'll see when that moment comes. But that match ended with Trevor Murdoch uh, uh, knocking out Aaron Stevens and giving him the full uh, the win for this one. Now, Jack Dane, as you know, he's been trying to avoid any worthy ch any challengers that wants it, but there is one challenger. He ref he will not turn away, and that is Marche Rocket because he believes. Marche Rocket, no, sorry, you're not going to beat me. That's what he's been leaning towards because Black Cheese believes that he will beat him for the NWA National Championship. Now, our next match, we have Angelina Love making her, her power debut against Tootie Lynn. I thought the match was pretty good. But what was weird is that, as, as you know, Angelina Love won the match. She extended a hand to Tootie Lynn. Now, on a side note on this part, I don't know if it had something to do, because if you guys know this, Angelina Love used to be married to David Richards. If you guys know this, Tootie Lynn was trained by David Richards. So basically, maybe she's showing a sign of respect because of her ex. Well, I don't know. <coughs> but it was very unusual. Even Velvet Sky said that she never extended her hand to anybody before. And I can believe that, but we'll just wait and see. Now, our, ugh, our next interviews is mostly coming from Kyle Davis. The first one is, of course, Idolmania. Apparently, the Slime Challenge is now being taken place against Mims and all this and that. So, it's still more like this and that. But they had some sort of a thing they wanted to do. But, I don't know. Then we had Camille and Latimer. They want to make an announcement, but they want to save it for NWA USA. But however, Camille is waiting for see who is brave enough to challenge her for her title. She's now trying to proclaim that no one will ever take that title. But we'll see when that day comes. Now our next match, which is our main event, the NWA World Tag Team Championship is on the line between the M Boys, the Briscoes versus La Rebellion. I thought the match was amazing because you have two different styles of wrestlers, how they portray. You know, you look at the Lucha Libre style, you look at the kind of um, guys that, you know, they brawl and all this. But, however, it was a smart move how La Rebellion were able to obtain the title by ducking out of the way from um, Mark Briscoe and then allowing, uh, what's his name, uh, Bestia to pin um, Jay Briscoe to win the retain the title. So I thought that was amazing. So it was a pretty good show. I think it was pretty amazing. I know they can do a lot more better. But we'll see what happens on NWSA USA. I believe it's time for AW Dark. Okay, AW Dark. Six matches only. It opened up with Red Velvet taking on Dulce Tormenta. Now, in this particular match, you see a new attitude with uh, Red Velvet. Not only because she won the qualifying match in the Women's Owen Hart uh, Foundation Tournament. As you know, she is now a member of the baddie section. Now, it kind of becomes like, why would she join Red um, Jay Cargill after what she has caused her, you know, <coughs> tormenting her? But whatever the reason is, we will wait for it. But however, there's now the new aggressive side from Red Velvet that allowed her to pick up the final slice onto Dulce de Tormenta to give her the winning the W for this one. Next match, we got Serpentico taking on Lee Moriarty. Now, Serpentico was dumb enough to make the first move, but Lee Moriarty fought back as always, basically showing who's boss. Now, of course, the commentators had to comment about the recent developments with Blackpool Combat Club. As you know, there's still signs, I believe, that maybe there's a strong possibility that maybe uh, he could join them, but He's been doing pretty well for himself <coughs> ever since he's under the mentorship of Matt Sadel. But it was Lee Moriarty who walked out as the victor, showing why Tiger Style is cool. Next up, we got women's tag team match. We have Rochelle Rose teaming up with the Bunny to take on Sky Blue and Anna J. Now, this match, as you know, is pretty interesting. As you know, the Anna J and the Bunny have dealt with each other in the past. But, however, in this particular match, Sky Blue had to step up her game. 
much of the match, um, <coughs> Blue and, and Rochelle were out, but however, it was Anna J who picked up the victory by applying the Queen Center to Rochelle jo Rose to give her the W. Now, as always, we have QT Marshall ranting as always. But his biggest opponent is none other than Penta El Oscuro. Now, that match is nuts. Now, Aaron Solo, he tries to get himself involved, but he got super kicked by Penta. But we did not anticipate Nick Camarado coming in and spear, but it did not work for QT. He tried the diamond cutter, failed him too, until Penta broke his arm to give him the W. So... Basically, better luck next time, QT. Now we got our next match, which is women's action. We got Abaddon versus Charlotte Renegade. This match went quickly because you know how Abaddon is. She is scary. Nobody wants to wrestle that much, but <coughs> it did happen. Now our main event is, of course, Top Flight. Teaming with Frankie Kazarian and the Hardys to take on <coughs> Private Party, The Blade, and Angelico of the... Andrade family office. They teamed up with Max Caster of the of the acclaim. I have to say it was a pretty good match. It gave the Hardys the opportunity to apply the Swanton onto um Isaiah Cassidy, and it was over right from there, giving them a much better edge. So it was a pretty good show. Not to mention uh, seeing the Hardys in dark uh in dark, but we'll see what happens then. So. I believe that's pretty much it. What we got with AW Dark. I believe it's time for NXT 2.0. Okay, NXT 2.0. This is the week before spring break in, which we're all excited about. It opened up with Nikita Lyons taking on Lash Legend. Now, keep in mind, the last time, about three weeks prior to this, Nikki, Nikita Lyons defeated Lash Legend. But Lash will not take this loss likely because she. this is all about jealousy. As you know, Nikita Lyons has been making a buzz all over social media. Lash Legend felt that the spotlight was taken from her, and now that she wants to take it back. However, Nikita Lyons, a fighter she doesn't quit no matter what the circumstances are but she was able to pick up the victory against Lash Legend but however about a week ago she confronted Natalia Natalia's presence has sparked a problem saying that you know she's a victim because all these new wrestlers are out to get her but she brought that mess to herself <coughs> but she comes out and attacks Nikita Lyons lucky for her um Court Jade helps Nikita Lyons, and it becomes clear that on spring break, and we are going to see Nikita Lyons and Cora Jade team up to take on Lash Legend and Natalia. So that's going to be one hell of a match. <coughs> now, as you know, Diamond Mine, I have to say, Diamond Mine, especially the Creed brothers, they have been on a tear. Now, Roderick Strong is trying to do whatever it takes to bring uh, bring out the spirit of Diamond Mind, what they were. So, basically, he's saying, you guys are making excuses of all this. So, he's like saying, no more excuses. So, he got something for the Creed Brothers. He brought in a couple of wrestlers that he knows. We're talking about the war, the, <coughs> the Viking Raiders, setting up for themselves in a tag match the following week, which... Is going to be one hell of a match. Now, originally we were supposed to have Cylon Quinn versus Tony uh, uh, D'Angelo, but it became Von Wagner. Now Wagner comes out, being aggressive he is, Stone does. I mean, the match was pretty, <coughs> more like a brute type brutality, who is the strongest. You know, Von Wagner claims that this is his world, people just live in it. But, however... Tony D, who built an enemy out of La Fam uh, out of Legado, decided, you know, he got, <coughs> Legado comes out to distract, but uh, these two guys that are on the side of, what's his name, of Tony D'Angelo showed up, but however, 
Santos gave a clear message to Tony D'Angelo with the lead pipe, but it did cost him the match. So practically that's what took place. Now, later on it was shown that, of course, Santos saying that don't mess with us, you know, with the familia being disrespectful, all this and that. Now they're building the momentum, but however, Tony D'Angelo wants to set up a meeting next week to discuss about the situation. As you know, this whole thing began when Santos Escobar told Tony D'Angelo to stay out of his business, which he did. He tried to play to give him peace offering, but uh, Santos wasn't having it. So this has became more like, you know, you should have just accepted the peace offering, but no, Santos had to be, you know, a hothead thinking that he has <coughs> all the attention, but that's what happened. Now, we were supposed to have Nathan Frazier make his debut against Guru Raj, but Grayson Waller will not let this happen. He felt that all these new stars had no business being there, so he tried to prevent them. But he took, turned his attention to the, to Chase University, where, of course, he still has his issues where he was confronted by them last week. But Nathan Frazier, thank God, uh, they were. he took the advantage while <coughs> Waller was not paying attention. He showed him <coughs> who's boss. <coughs> but, of course, Chase, Andre Chase said this was a teachable moment. So that's how it pretty much goes out. Now... As you know, may have been heard, we just have three new women announced for the NXT Women's Breakout Tournament. The first one is Ariana Grace. You may know her now, you may know her as Bianca Corelli, the daughter of Santino Corelli. Now, they never mentioned who she was, but she did say she used to do pageants, but she also was trained in MMA and boxing, which is a quality. But there are others that they introduced, like Kiana James. Um, Sloan Jacobs, and I believe maybe Alba F Fry, who is in Fire, better known as uh, Kaylee Ray. <coughs> and I will discuss name changes in my podcast soon enough, but this is what drives me nuts. Now, after what happened with Grayson Waller, he be looks like he built some sort of a friendship or an alliance with Tiffany Stratton, all this and that, but... I don't know exactly what they're planning, but we'll see. Now, we had uh, a, uh, Brooks Jensen, Josh Briggs, and Fallon Henley to take on Legato. But, however, someone attacked Legato. Now, prior before this, that one mysterious girl that keeps up showing up during Val Wagner's matches distracted uh, Jensen, but he was attacked from behind. Now, Briggs thought it was Legato who did it. Even they said it during the match. It wasn't them. Of course, it had to be uh, Von Wagner out of what he did. But, of course, the match between Legado, take <coughs> Don Briggs, and F Henley, it was pretty good. I have to say it showed, okay, one guy can handle it. But this match proved Legado's still dominance. But the real question does remain, who? what does this mean now? Do they shift their focus away from Legado or focus their attention on Va Von Wagner. That's the, the clear thing. Now, our next match we have is, of course, um, Kaden Carter and Katana Chase, formerly known as Casey Kanazawa, taking on Ulyssa Leone and Valentina Frost. I thought the match was pretty good because it showed a lot of more momentum and potential with Carter and, Ch and Chance to win the NXT Women's Tag Team titles. And it always goes in that direction. So I can't wait to see them, but I'm not sure. I don't think, and I think there are going to be good matches involved in this. Now, our next match, well, next scene we have, of course, is Solo Sokoa taking on Trick Williams. Now, keep in mind, Solo Sokoa lost a match against Cameron Grimes, but that was all thanks to <coughs> the former A champion. Who decided, you know, not tolerate someone taking a title that belongs. But Cameron Grimes said he's not afraid of putting the title on the line of these two. But we'll see what happens then. But the match itself with Trick Williams and Solo Sokoa. Solo Sokoa took him out completely. You know, doing like a little frog splash of some sorts. 
But as soon as the match was over, Cameron Grimes came out to congratulate him. But of course, Cameron Grimes, I mean, uh, Carmelo Hayes tries to get in his face. But he, there was a misfire because Sosa Cole was trying to take out the head of Carmelo Hayes, but accidentally got uh, Cameron Grimes. But we'll see what happens then. Now, our next match we have is in Edris Enofi and Malik Blade taking on the Viking Raiders. I thought the match was pretty interesting. Not to mention, everybody missed the Viking Raiders as we knew them. But it was their, them that win the match, gained their respect. And however, the Creed brothers are not going to overlook them, knowing that they are have a big challenge in their hands. Now, earlier in the day, we saw Roxanne talking to Indy Hartwell and Persia about what happened last week. The toxic attraction saying that the only reason she won was thanks to Wendy Chu. So basically, they're saying that there's a difference between Roxy, who is, Roxanne, who is someone who's a dreamer against someone who's an actual champion. But I have to say, in the match between Rox, Roxanne Perez and Nanny Rose was unbelievably good because it showed Roxanne, Roxanne is not someone you need to take lightly. She's not some girl that you think she is, but she bit off, trying to bite off the hand of, of Mandy Rose. But unfortunately, she lost. But... Wendy Chu went on a hunt, spread booby traps, and all this. I thought it was hilarious, but yes, I thought it was fun. I enjoyed that moment, but we'll see what happens then. Now, the last thing we see is Joe Gazy coming out, as you know, <coughs> claiming that once he wins the NXT title, that the world will be for the better and under his vision. Rick Sano tried to confront him, then... Ron Breaker comes out, but apparently he was taken out by Joe Gacy. That match will take place in Spring Breakin', which we're going to see how this one goes. So I think that's pretty much it, what's going on. So let's move on with some news updates. Okay, so here are some news updates. Now, I talked about NXT 2.0. Originally, one of the matches was supposed to be Zion Quinn versus Tony D'Angelo. But however, the city was out. But from what they're saying, from what other sources are revealing, he was not medically cleared. He got injured, but they're hoping for another speedy recovery. Uh, this was kind of weird. I know he was injured not previously, but uh, <coughs> I don't know. Not much of the specifications on what the injury was, but we'll uh, I'll follow up on this once it comes into light. Now, you may have heard of Pat Buck, guys, who was a producer with WWE and a coach. Uh, recently, he was he's no longer with the company. He left, um, but there's been talk about where is he going to go next, and apparently. It just found out he is now all elite working with AEW as a producer and a coach in the backstage, which is a good thing to have. You see, this is what one of the things that <coughs> AEW needs. They need people who know how to handle things in the backstage, and Pat Buck is no exception. They need a guy like him. Now, our last update is, of course, inf more updates on the LA Fights Volume 3 that's taking place in LA. It's going to be on May 21st. Now, <coughs> Pardon my language on this one. Um, they announced of a wrestler who I have seen before. I've seen this guy on the Level Up shows here in San Diego from the Level Up Pro Wrestling Academy. We're talking about this guy named Rob Shit. Yes, guys. That's a wrestler's name. So, Rob Shit. Now, he they're saying that he's going to make <coughs> his Alec Fights debut. I'm kind of curious how this is going to go with him. Uh, but... Yeah, but they also announced for other wrestlers who will be involved. We have Jai Vidal, Titus Alexander, <coughs> Jordan Cruz, Gangster Party, and Juicy Finale, plus more. So, that's pretty much it. What's going on with LA Fights and everything else. But I believe it's time for me to call it a day.
Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode, you know. Um, coming up, I will do AEW Dark. I uh, still haven't decided what others because apparently there are still some new wrestling shows coming up. There are those I haven't seen, for example. I haven't seen the latest um, events with All Japan with their car- uh, Champion Carnival, which I am really, really want to see. And there's other events, too. But we'll see what happens then. But right now, I'm going to leave it as that. But I'll see you guys on the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.